Hi, and welcome to another lesson of the Excel for Absolute Beginners course. This is lesson 20, and we are looking at cell references and how to use them. In the course of the lesson, you will learn about absolute cell references and relative cell references, how to mix them up, and how to copy formulas across various cells. Here's an example spreadsheet that we are going to use to illustrate the cell referencing. So basically, what are they? What is absolute cell reference and what is relative cell referencing? When we say relative cell referencing, what it means is that anytime you copy the formula or the reference of a cell in a formula, copy it across to a different cell, the cell reference is going to change depending on how far down or side you have gone. So which column have you moved to? How many times did you move? Which row have you moved? How many times did you move? So based on those information, Excel will automatically adjust the formula for you or the cell reference for you. What we mean by this practically is that now that I have A1 here, assuming I decide to have cell D to give me the value, produce a value of A1, which is going to automatically give me as 1 because I've entered the formula A1. This is telling Excel that, hey, give me the value of A1. All right. I can equally copy this, copy this cell reference. As you can see, this means that I've copied equal to A1. But if I paste it down here, because I've gone to a new row, relative referencing, Excel by default uses relative referencing. So it's going to change the row that I was on. So even though I entered A1 here, if I move to the next row and paste it, it's going to give me A2. And the reason why it is A2 is because Excel has detected that I have moved to one row down. So it has added one row to the previous row. And that is what the relative referencing is. However, if I copy it to the column next to it, then Excel will, determine that, will detect that I have moved to another column. So it will also move to the adjacent column. For that matter, instead of having A1 here, I would rather have B1. So let's go ahead and paste it here. And you see it's given as a value of B1. So that is uh, the relative reference in respect to Excel. Anytime you copy a formula that contains a cell reference to another cell, it automatically adjusts the cell reference based on how far you have gone away from the original one. So if we should move to the next one, Excel will say, hey, you've moved two columns away from the original one that you copied. For that matter, I have to also move two columns to give you that respective uh, cell reference. So let's go ahead and paste it here. And sorry, let me copy it and paste it here. And as you can see, it's given us zero, but the reference is C1. Initial, what we copied was A1. But since we've moved two columns, Excel determines that, okay, it was this that you were talking about, but you've moved two columns to go and paste it. So let me automatically also move two columns and give you the value there. All right. The opposite of this is what we call absolute reference. And with absolute reference, what we intend to achieve is that we want to have that exact reference that we have copied in our formula across, no matter where we send it to. So don't change it once we move it there. So if I want this specific value, the value of A1, not to be changed, I want it to, uh, when I move it here, it shouldn't change. So let's try that. By default, I said Excel uses the, Excel uses the relative reference. For that matter, if I go ahead and paste it now, it's going to change. And you can see that it has changed the, both the column and the row because I have moved away some columns and I have moved down a row as well. But that is not what I was looking for. I was looking for where to using the same reference, that's A1. I wanted the value of A1 for this specific formula that I'm coming to create here. So how do we go about it? That is when we use the relative, uh, sorry, we use the absolute reference. How then do we create absolute reference? So for absolute reference, what you have to do is you introduce a dollar sign. And for absolute reference, you can apply it to just the column or just the row or both of them. So either of them can take the dollar sign and tell Excel that don't change me. So if we apply the dollar sign 
to only the column name or column identity, that's A. All that is telling Excel is that anywhere, irrespective of where I move this thing to, don't change the uh, reference A or the column identity. Then we can also append the dollar sign to the row number. And this tells Excel that the row number two shouldn't change. So if I have dollar A, dollar one, all that is telling Excel is that no matter where I copy this formula to, keep A and keep one, the row one. So keep this A and uh, one. All right, so let's practicalize this. Now that I have this, let's go ahead and copy it and paste it here. And you realize that we still have one and the formula hasn't changed. It's still dollar A, dollar one. Unlike before where it's changed to E2. This is because we've told Excel that we don't want you to update the reference wherever you find it. But if I had not brought the dollar in front of A, let's see what happens here. We have the formula A1. Let's test the other forms of this uh, absolute referencing. So an example that we can do is let's delete this, come back here, and instead of using dollar $A, dollar $1, we are rather going to use dollar $A1. Okay, now let's copy dollar $A1 across and paste it here. And sorry, it has changed. Why has it changed? When you check this, you realize that the formula has now changed to dollar $A2. And the reason is that you didn't append the dollar before the 1 when you copied it. For that matter, Excel will automatically adjust the row. So anytime you want to keep both the formula, both the column and the row, you have to append the dollar sign before them. And if you want to keep just one of them, just go ahead and append the formula before the dollar sign before just that. So we could equally have had this being dollar one, but no dollar in front of A. And when we copy this across, when we copy this across, this is a dollar one, meaning dollar one means always we are going to use one. Let's paste this here and see what it gives us. Now the formula becomes e dollar one. So one is constant, but e has changed. The column has changed because we have moved some distance away. All right, let's go to a practical scenario and see how we can use this cell referencing in a practical situation. Here we have a spreadsheet that we are supposed to do some calculations with. We have the cost price of an item, we have the cost of transportation of that same item, and we need to find the total unit cost, which is more of the sum of the cost price and the cost of transportation. Then afterwards, we'd have to find the selling price, which is the total unit cost by the markup price. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the addition. To introduce a formula, we need to bring our equal to sign. Then we can go ahead and select this, bring our operator, which is plus, then select that, hit enter. This gives us the total for this particular item, item one. Now we can use either copy and paste to apply it to the other cell and you realize that automatically this value is also calculated for us using the respective cell references. And the reason that is possible is because Excel is using the relative referencing. The initial, initial formula that we wrote was B2 plus C2. But when we copy the formula to the next row, Excel automatically detected that we have moved down a row. For that matter, instead of B2 plus C2, and now changes it to B3 plus C3. And if we copy it down, this will become B4 plus C4, and this will become B5 plus C5. So that is how we make use of the relative referencing. And we can use the fill handler so down here, you see that small green scroll, just hold it and drag it and automatically apply the formula across. So now you can see this has become B4 plus C4, then B5 plus C5 for this one. So if you have a lot of data, you can just use the fill handler to drag it down to the bottom and it will do the calculation for all of them using the relative Referencing. What of the absolute referencing? We need to calculate the selling price, 
and selling price is just this value so let's go ahead equal to this value times the uh, markup so we can click on this and hit enter that gives us the selling price for this but unfortunately if we drag this down to fill it it's giving us zero 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 which is not possible because we have values here and the selling price shouldn't be zero so why are we getting zero we are getting zero because excel by default uses relative referencing so once we have moved down one row it automatically moves down the row of the reference that we're using we had b8 as our reference in the original formula so once we move down one row excel now decides that hey this is b9 that you want the next one it chooses b10 the next one it chooses b11 but we don't want all of those ones all we want is b8 so it should keep for this particular formula we want you to keep the value of b8 don't change b8 even when we move around if we want that to be achieved then we have to tell excel explicitly that this is a absolute reference and how do we do that append the dollar sign in front of the column and in front of the row if you want to maintain the value of a specific cell okay so now if i click that and use the floor handle to drag down to them automatically it's going to calculate for all of them and when we hit on them you realize that e2 time the la b the la eight when you come here to is D3 times dollar B dollar 8. This becomes D4 times dollar B. So you realize that the D value or the D row, the row attached to D is changing. And the reason is that that is using the relative reference. But for this one, dollar B dollar 8, because we have appended dollar before it, is using the absolute reference. So I hope that makes the difference between absolute and relative referencing clear to you. These are very important aspects when it comes to doing calculations and various analysis on your data in any spreadsheet application. So hopefully you understand it. If you don't understand it, go over the video again and appreciate exactly what we did in here. And if you have not watched the previous lessons, do want to watch the previous lessons to get a better understanding of all of these things that we are doing in these lessons. Thank you and I'll see you in the next lesson.